Imagine being buried under a kitchen floor. This is the horrific true crime of Andrew Innes, requested by a follower. Back in 2020, Benny Lynn Burke, the 25-year-old Filipino mother, was sat at home, like many of us, during the lockdown in the UK. Her home was far from where she was raised, it was in Bristol in England. After heading to the UK a couple of years earlier from the Philippines back in 2019, Benny Lynn Burke was expecting a happy and new adventure with her husband, Lexington. They met in her homeland, fell in love, gotten married before making the big decision to leave her homeland and return to the UK with Lexington, a decision that would later leave her viciously mutilated. Her and her husband would have a beautiful little girl together, which they would name Jellica. Unfortunately, family life wasn't meant to be for the three of them, as it's claimed that Lexington became more aggressive since returning back to the UK, a different character to the one that Benny Lynn had met. The couple would decide to end their relationship mutually. Benny Lynn was now stuck in a foreign land to her, in Bristol, during a pandemic. The only little light she had was the little Jellica. She decided to try and meet someone new and joined a dating site called Philippinian Cupid. Initially looking to perhaps find another Filipinian to date, but instead she found a much older Scottish man named Andrew Innes. Andrew had smarts for sure, he had been at Aberdeen University, he was a computer gaming engineer. At 52 years old however, he was over double Benny Lynn's age, and had some baggage too. Allegedly he had previously been married to a Japanese woman over in Japan where he had children with her too, before breaking up and then being deported back to the UK. A similar story to Benny Lynn's in a sense. At first, Benny Lynn was a bit put off by this, but over time she started to think on it. Probably with the loneliness in her life as well, she decided to give love another chance. Big mistake. They'd strike up a relationship online at first, and apparently Andrew had even offered a £1,000 a month job to Benny Lynn. She didn't want to leave Bristol where she had settled, but Andrew wanted her, Angelica, in Dundee, Scotland with him. A whopping 440 miles separated the pair. 18th of February 2021, the couple would decide to meet and Benny Lynn would get a chance to see the sights of Dundee. Little two-year-old Jellica would come along too. A couple of weeks later, there had been no sign of Benny Lynn Burke and her daughter Jellica. Benny Lynn's sister had tried to contact her and at first was greeted with text message replies, but then started to get responses from Andrew instead. It's said that she demanded a video with Benny Lynn and instead all she received was an old one. Andrew Innes had palmed this off. He claimed that she had gone off with another man near Glasgow and he hadn't seen her since. Lexington, Benny Lynn's ex, had also tried to contact her for his custody visit of Jellica with two text messages and a missed call. There's talk to Andrew had claimed that Lexington was trying to take Jellica from Benny Lynn, so Benny Lynn had shut off her phone and fled, so this couldn't happen. It was all sounding very suspicious, and Shella, the sister, was extremely and rightfully worried. The police were soon in action. They had a missing 25-year-old and 2-year-old. At first, they tried to gain access to Andrew's residence, but he refused. March the 5th, two weeks after Benny Lynn and Jellica had gone with Andrew, they managed to track Andrew Innes' vehicle doing that long distance to and from Bristol. That same vehicle was sat on his Troon Avenue driveway. With this evidence now pointing directly at Andrew, they decided to proceed and question him. Notably, there was a seven-year-old young girl sat on the sofa in the living room watching cartoons, Andrew Innes stated that this was his daughter. Under intense interrogation, Andrew Innes told detectives that same story that Benny Lynn had gone off to be with another man. Mounting pressure onto Innes, the police would keep poking holes into the 52-year-old story. During this time, he had claimed that they had broken off the relationship when he had looked at her phone and seen that she was seeing other men. Before, he would admit to killing Benny Lynn Burke and say... She's under the kitchen floor. The police would unfortunately find out that the seven-year-old girl in his house was in fact not his daughter, but in fact would be another victim of this depraved murderer. With her testimony, this is what happened. 
If you're enjoying this story so far, please drop a like. Search results had shown that Andrew Innes had searched well before meeting Benny Lynn on the internet the use of chloroform and for underground containers. He had been left scorned and angry at his previous failed relationship. He had a spreadsheet that he created to rank women based on height, weight, age and if they had children. Top scores were given to those in their mid to late 20s that did have young children. Due to her age, we don't have this seven year old's name, but her accounts really put into perspective. What is described as amongst the very worst crimes which have come before the High Court. Andrew had been seen by the girl with Benny Lynn and he had taken a hammer which he had been captured purchasing from a DIY store. Cracking her over the head numerous times in a scene of pure malice. He then switched to what some would say was a samurai sword before savagely stabbing away at the body of the 25 year old mother. Before flipping the sword around, revealing the hilt and bringing it down on her face over and over again. Bludgeoning the helpless and now deceased corpse of Benelin. He claimed to the police that initially she attacked him with a sushi knife. The only silver lining for this young girl being there was that she was able to easily disprove all of his lies. Days later, it's believed Andrew would then go on to murder the little toddler, Jellica. When asked where she was, he said, under the floor with mum. I couldn't look after a child, the child was screaming. He had assaulted Jellica during this sickening and prolonged captivity. The young witness had said that they had all been tied up in a bathroom at times. She had been raped numerous times in this period. When he deemed Jellica's time was up, he would play hide and seek with his seven year old. When playing, he would sneak off. Before putting his hands on the neck of Jellica before squeezing the life out of the poor little girl. He disposed of their bodies in which he described as Christian burials under his kitchen floor, feet below the concrete. He had the audacity of saying that he never touched this lone survivor, but sadly this was a lie as sperm samples were taken from her and they matched Andrew Innes. It's believed he chose his victims carefully, fueled by rage and revenge for his failed relationships. Andrew Innes was sent down in February 2023, around two years after the disturbing murders of the two. 36 years minimum term to be served. He claimed to have gone insane and suffered psychosis after taking steroids and medication used to treat Crohn's disease. Dr. Cowan believes that Andrew was not impaired at the time of the murders. Andrew's story also changed far too often. An expert does go on to say that he had a ridiculous amount of dating app profiles and that in cases like this, he wouldn't be shocked if there's more victims that may be uncovered. The judge and jury saw straight through his lies and saw this as the cold, premeditated and unjust case that it was. Where a mother and daughter had their lives taken and Jellica was also abused too. Andrew Innes even told police that if they had come 24 hours later, the surviving abuse victim may have been dead too. So was he truly evil? Likes are appreciated and fuel me. Up here is another family case for you, deeply sad and a tough one to watch. Imagine having the picturesque family life, a Disney life in fact, to only become the villain in your own story.